A reading from the letter of Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the holy ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love, being as I am, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus. I urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who was once useless to you, but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, Write this in my own hand. I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self? Yes, brother, may I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Responsorial Psalm Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked it thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit. For just as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The day of the Lord was understood in the Old Testament as the time when God would manifest his glory and power and overthrow the enemies of his people Israel. The prophet Amos declared that the day 
also meant judgment for Israel as well as the nations. The prophet Joel proclaimed that at this day, those who truly repented would be saved, while those who remained enemies of the Lord, whether Jew or Gentile, would be punished. Why did Jesus associate lightning with the day of the Lord? In the arid climate of Palestine, storms were infrequent and seasonal. They often appeared suddenly or unexpectedly, seemingly out of nowhere, covering everywhere in thick darkness. With little or no warning, lightning filled the sky with its piercing flashes of flaming light. Its power struck terror and awe in those who tried to flee from its presence. Jesus warned the Pharisees that the Son of Man would come in like manner, quiet suddenly and unexpectedly on the clouds of heaven to bring God's judgment on the day of the Lord. No special sign will be needed to announce his appearance. Or will his presence and power be veiled or hidden, but all will recognize him as clearly as the lightning in the sky. Jesus identified himself with the day of the Lord. Son of Man was understood as the messianic title for the one who would come not only to establish God's kingdom, but who would come as judge of the living as well as the dead. Jesus appoints to his second coming when he will return to complete the work of restoration and final judgment. While we do not know the time of his return, we will not mistake it when it happens. It will be apparent to all, both believers and unbelievers as well. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be the ruler of my heart and the master of my life, that I may always live in the freedom of your love and truth. Amen. Mm -hmm.